The music box is, for me, the funniest half hour I've ever seen. Getting the piano up that hill. I, as a kid, I used to watch it, and I still watch it today, and it's still funny. Would you gentlemen please let me care? Oh, just the number of ways they found to get this piano back down and then get it back up again. It was just side-splitting. It was wonderful. And what makes it even funnier is the punchline. All you had to do was to drive around that road to the top here. That there's a road that could take them round back. Why didn't we think of that before? Proper straight man and comedian, in a way. The seed was so thin and Eddie Large. <laughs> it's called Eddie Large for a reason. <laughs> Although, technically, Sid was the taller man, Eddie just weighed more. But narrow and wide didn't quite have the same ring. Women have only got to take one look at him, and you know the first thing they say? Can I take them off now? Exactly. <laughs> Sid and Eddie spent 13 years at the top of the light entertainment tree, regularly pulling in up to 15 million viewers. It was like watching a, a, a typical, very typical variety act. Sid Little knew how to let Eddie Large be funny. He knew when he had to say something, when he had to say nothing. As long as Sid was there, Eddie was one very, very funny comic. I'd like to sing my song now, as a matter It's not very nice, threatening the audience like that. Five pound head to get in here, you know. Five pounds? That's all the BBC could afford. <laughs> I was working with them, and it got to lunchtime. And Eddie had to do one line as a voiceover. And the director said, no, 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 uh, uh, Sid, we don't need you. You can go to lunch. And Eddie turned around, looked at him and says, no, Sid, I need you standing there. And I watched that and I thought, God, that tells you so much about their relationship. Perhaps what we all love best, though, is Muttley's trademark angry muttering. Legendary voice artist Don Messick beautifully imbues the mongrel with a frustrated, almost impotent fury whenever he's chastised by the dastardly dick. And this may be your last birthday, you dumbhead. Rustle, 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 rustle. He's saying something incredibly rude, but you can't exactly tell what it is. It was a shipmate, he's going to Now, if I translate that, you'd have to be taken off the air. You're a rut face bastard, before I said. You're a rut ship face can it bastard. I've got one coming up in a minute. <laughs> God moves in a mysterious way. Their 30-year union featured stage shows, radio programmes and a sitcom that began in 1983 and gave viewers a peek into their home life in Stacton Trestle. They were incredibly rude. I beg your pardon, what are you insinuating? But they did it in such a clever way that we'd never quite seen that before. I think it's high time you started charging for your singing lessons. Oh, I could. But why not? Oh, if Andy, how could I possibly take money from somebody like the butcher? <laughs> I mean, we've been going to the Tolmans now 25 years. That man has not put his meat up once in a quarter of a century. Northern Housewives, Mrs. Sissy Braithwaite and Mrs. Ada Shufflebottom, comedy creations of Roy Barraclough and Les Dawson, hitched their boobs and flashed their bloomers in a series of sketches in the 1970s and 80s. I don't know where that came from, but I know where it's going. <laughs> your trouble is you're, you're just crass, Ada. Absolutely crass. Women's ailments were a very, very big part of the sketches. I'm approaching the change. <laughs> approaching the change? From which direction? Most of the comedy I remember coming was not always from the sketches, but just from the looks they gave each other, which basically tells the audience this has got a double meaning that you probably haven't even thought about before, but I've just made that slightly smutty. I wonder who sculpted it. Whoever he was, he weren't short of clay, was he? A recent stage play revived classic sketches and examined the friendship between Les and Roy. Not only did the audience get to enjoy these um, wonderful sketches, but they got to see a bit of the, the wonderful bond that Les and Roy have.